In this episode, we're setting up enhanced input for every standard UE5 5.0 input and also everything we set up in this series, like jump, walk, run, toggle, crouch, and mouse wheel zoom. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and today we are upgrading our input actions. And this episode is going to apply to you a little bit differently depending on whether you started your project on 5.0 like me, or you're starting it on 5.1. If you're starting it on 5.1, that's totally fine, but you're gonna need to use some of the things in this episode to go back to previous episodes like episode four and five with the run, walk, toggle, and then also the mouse wheel scroll, and just use what you learned this episode to apply to those features. But if you started your project on 5.0 like I did, everything we do this episode, it's gonna be entirely applicable. We're going to upgrade all of our input actions. So here are the key concepts for this episode, and everything's revolving around setting up enhanced input. So let's get to it. All right, so to start out this episode, we're going to create a brand new project, and that project has to be 5.1 or beyond. As of the recording of this episode, 5.2 just came out, so if you do it on 5.2, that's totally fine as well. But it has to be a version that has enhanced input, so that's 5.1 and beyond. So I'm just going to go up to Unreal Engine, and the reason we're doing this, the reason we're creating this new project is that we're going to migrate all the existing setup directly from this new project into our old project. And you could skip right over this part if you created your original project on 5.1 or later on. So I'm going to go to games. We're going to create a new third person. Man, this brings back memories. So I'm going to name this enhanced input test and create. All right. So we're back in our original vanilla third person project. Like I said, a lot of memories. So content drawer and then over to the third person and input. And you should see this, this input mapping context, and also this actions folder with three different input actions. And let's go into one of these because I want to give you a really quick overview. Let's go into jump and expand that. So the input actions basically define how the input is processed. So is it a bool? Is it a float? Like, does it vary from one value to another? And the nice thing is if we move these from the standard project over into our 5.1 project, we don't even have to worry about it. We could just take what's existing and working. So I'll close out of that. And let's also go back to input this IMC default here and we can expand mappings up here. So as you can see, we have three default mappings here. We have IA jump, we've got IA move and IA look. And so this record is what takes those input actions. And then under mappings here, we install each of those input actions. And then we define what buttons, like what actual input is going to drive those actions. And because IMC default here has all the input action mappings already, all we need to do is we need to migrate this one record. So if we migrate just this, it's gonna bring over those other actions. So I can right click, I can go to asset actions, and then migrate. And it found dependencies like IMC default, of course, and then these three inputs. And we can say, okay, now we've got to move this into our proper project. So we got to go back to our Unreal Projects folder, and I'm going to move it to the under DPOC rehearsal environment, but just choose whatever environment, whatever project you want, and then into the content folder. Make sure to go into the content folder. So once you're in the content folder, select folder, and it should migrate. And now we just need to close out of this, boot up our new project, or I should say boot up our previous project. So once you've got your previous project open, let's go to content drawer, back over to content, and then over here in the third person, and you should now have your inputs folder with the IMC default right here. And just expand mappings, make sure you got all those, and they look exactly identical to the project we just created. So now we have to integrate this IMC default input mapping context into our third person character. Basically, we have to tell our third person character to use this input mapping context. So the way we do that, I'm going to open up our third person character here, and we got to go back over to our event graph and come up all the way to begin play. Now, if you're not following this series, you're not going to have the vast majority of the stuff here, but we got to come to where we get our player controller reference, and I'm going to make some space right after the player controller reference. So all this stuff that we did in previous episodes, move this over. Now for you, if you're not following this series, you're not going to cast to my player controller because that's a new player controller class that we created. I think it was all the way back in our first UI episode. So instead you would just cast to player controller rather than my player controller. If you're following this series, you'll already have all this stuff. And then from this, so following this, you're going to get a reference to the new enhanced input local player subsystem. And this is a new subsystem that now exists post 5.1 on all player controllers. And then from this, we're just going to check to see, is it valid? This one, the question mark and connect this up just like this. Because if it is valid, if we do have an enhanced input local player subsystem, then what we're gonna do is we are going to, from this, we are going to add a mapping context. 
And this is where we can define the context that we were just talking about, the IMC default. So mapping context, go to the drop down, it's right there. But we can only do that if the enhanced input local player subsystem is actually valid. And then we can move over here, connect this up just like this. So we'll compile and save this, and we are all set to begin mapping individual actions like jumping, movement, all that stuff. So let's start with jump because it's the easiest. So all I'm going to do is on my event graph, I'm going to come down under all the movement stuff, jump right here. And all we need to do is right click and search for IA underscore jump. And we've got enhanced action events all starting with IA. And each of these, these IAs, they correspond to, if we go back to third person character input actions, each of these right here. So we right click and then IA underscore jump and boom. And we don't need the two separate sets of input actions for touch versus jump up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna eliminate these completely, cut this one too, input action jump, move this in and make sure to connect up started. So not triggered for this, but started. Most of the time for these enhanced input actions, all you need is the started and then the completed down here for stop jumping. So if you've got that, compile and save and let's test it. So I'm gonna delete out our adversary AI character just for now and right click play from here. So test your jumping. Can you still jump? And I'm jumping just fine. So far so good. So back to third person character. And the next one we're gonna do is a little bit more complicated and that's the look. So the look, which is up here. So input axis look up, down, turn right, left. And over here on the right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do IA underscore look. And for the action value here, we have to actually split this into multiple components. And you'll see how we connect this up over here on the right. So right click on action value, split struct pin, and it has an X and a Y. So all we're gonna do, and this is insanely easy. So I understand why Unreal Engine is going this way. So instead of all this stuff, I'm just gonna make a little bit more space here copy add controller yaw input and paste it over here and then for this we need to activate it on triggered and the reason we're doing triggered instead of started is that it's ongoing i don't fully understand that but it's the fact that you're holding down a button like you're continuously turning and so because of that it's this triggered and we can link up action value x to this and then we're going to get our pitch input here so copy this paste it right over there and then we're gonna hook up Y to this. And that's literally it. But to test it, make sure you disconnect this and this. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click, Alt, click. We still have our camera input, but we're gonna to get to that. So, okay, so we have our look input right there, compile and save. And gonna test this, so play from here. So look around and see if you can turn and if everything's looking right when you're turning. Now it's actually turning very fast, you'll notice. And the reason it's doing that, let me go back to the third person character. We're gonna delete out all of this stuff right here. So we're gonna delete out all of this and delete. And I realize that's, that's a lot, but that's what we're doing. So we are gonna then instead highlight this and we're gonna say, look input. And that's gonna be the whole thing. And the reason it was turning extra fast is it was doing duplicate looking. Compile and save and let's test it one more time. Yeah, so now it's back to normal speed and Everything's hunky-dory, two down. Next up is movement input. So let's go back. We've got all this crazy stuff here. Instead of all of this, what we're gonna do is right click. We're gonna do IA underscore move. And this one's a little bit more complicated, but that's quite all right. So I'm gonna right click on action value again, split the struct pin. So the Y, the Y here, the bottom one is gonna be hooked up to this. And then the X, the X here is gonna be hooked up here right here. So we're gonna delete out input access move right left and input access move forward backward. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this, we're gonna move it out, just make a little bit more space so we can move this in. And I'm gonna delete out this comment. I'm gonna move these three in, be very close. And I'll put in a little reroute so it goes underneath. Uh, one more reroute and we'll have it come up there. This is gonna go also from triggered because it's ongoing. I know you would think ongoing. I, you know, there are tutorials out there on enhanced input that do a better job than I'm doing. I'm just showing how to get it from 5.0 to 5.1. And for this the action value X, we're gonna put in another reroute. This one, we're gonna move up here, connect up here, this one to there. And then these are gonna move in, tuck them nice underneath. So something like that should be the totality. But we also need to take this action value X here and we need to connect this up to here. And the reason we need to do that is because this portion of it is from previous episodes. Assess forward input for purposes of hitting the ground at high speeds. I think that was the fall episode. And what we're gonna do is one last comment. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of this all original event graph setup from a third person character because it's not original anymore. So I'm gonna take all this and we're gonna comment. Just gonna title it movement input. 
then compile and save that. And we'll test our movement. Yeah, we could test our turning, make sure turning is totally fine. Yep, seems good to me. And zoom in, zoom out. We haven't yet done the mouse wheel zoom. So let's do that next, huh? So that's it for the standard stuff. And everything else we do in this episode is going to be for actions that we specifically set up as part of this series. And I know I just said mouse wheel zoom, but let's do that second. Let's start with our walk run toggle because that's basically the simplest thing we've got. So if we come down here, this right here that we set up in episode four. So to do that, we need to create a brand new input action because if we go to IA, we only have the ones that we moved in from our new project that we created all the way at the beginning of this episode. So if we go back to third person input and actions, we can right click and select input and choose input action. And I'm gonna call it IA underscore walk run toggle. And this is how you create any new input action. We'll go into that and we're gonna keep it completely standard. So consume input is checked in the value type. It's a digital bool, it's either on or off. So we'll save that and that is good to go. And then right click over here and just search for IA underscore walk run toggle. There it is. And then we can connect up started directly to it. We can delete out this one and move this up to encompass encapsulate something like that compile and save this but we forgot a step what did we forget so we created the input action but we didn't put it into our input mapping context the imc default so this is what brings them all together and that's why we needed to set up the reference that's up here the enhanced input local player subsystem so if we zoom out come back down 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 okay let's go back to imc underscore default we're going to create a new mapping for that mapping come down here and then we select ia walk run toggle and this is where we can choose whatever keyboard button we want now i got a lot of grief for using caps lock but you know what I'm stuck in my ways. We're using caps lock. So we can hit the keyboard button, caps lock, and boom, it's defined. So we'll save that back in our third person character. So if you got this, so started is connected right up to there. We are ready to test. So play from here. All right, we're running, 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 caps lock. And we're walking and then caps lock again. And we're running, 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 and caps lock. All good. Now on to our mouse wheel scrolls. Back to content drawer, right click on walk, run, toggle. We're gonna duplicate that. We're gonna call it IA underscore mouse wheel zoom in. And then we'll right click and duplicate that one and IA mouse wheel zoom out. And those are once again gonna be digital the same way. So we don't have to mess with this at all. Value type is fine. So we go back to our IMC default do another mapping down here we choose mouse wheel zoom in and for zoom in we can just search for mouse wheel up yeah this one right here and then we'll do another mapping and that's going to be our zoom out and then we can search for mouse wheel down boom and save that back to third person character and down here so once again delete out our input actions there right click and search for ia mouse wheel zoom in make a little bit more space here move this one down and we'll do the same thing ia mouse wheel zoom out and what i found is because i think it's because it's a continuous thing but i found that triggered worked a lot better than started here so we're going to connect up these to triggered so compile and save this and we'll test our mouse wheel zoom Zoom in, yep, yep, zoom out, voila. Now C is for crouching, that's good enough for me. If you don't have kids, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so we gotta take care of quiet crouching here. So we'll go back to content drawer, right click on IA mouse wheel zoom in, duplicate, it's gonna be IA crouch. Body crouch, junior, save that. Right click on quiet crouching, IA underscore crouch. And then we're gonna take triggered and connect it up to comprehensive crouch. And the reason we're using triggered is because you're holding down that button. In my case, it's gonna be C for crouching. And then for the attempt to uncrouch, we're gonna take canceled and completed. So either one of these and connect that up there. And then we can delete out C. Move this in and I'm gonna take this, make it a little bit larger, compile and save this, but then we gotta go back over to IMC default. We're gonna add another mapping, call it our IA crouch, very first one, and keyboard C or whatever button you want. Save that. And so let's test this with a cube. So we can just get a cube, put our cube right by the ocean and then C, we can get underneath it. And then if I stop holding C, yeah, I'm stuck underneath the cube because I'm not tall enough to uncrouch. And then if I come up underneath the cube without holding C, voila, back to normal. C again, so far so good. So I thought about doing more of these, right? Because we definitely have a few more. We've got our right mouse button. We got one through nine and then zero down here. But honestly, these are tied to the keyboard and the mouse respectively. 
Uh, and you know how to do this now. You know how to create the enhanced inputs. And so in general, the rule is if it's something that's ongoing, use triggered. If it's a one-time press, use started. And then we also did the canceled and completed with our crouching over here. And if you want more information on enhanced input generally, there are better and more robust tutorials out there. I'm going to link them in the description below. So feel free to check that out. So that concludes our episode for today. And in our next episode, we're setting it up such that our character can respawn. At first, it's not going to be anywhere on the level. It's just going to be one stop. But making sure that our gameplay abilities still persist across character death, both for our regular player character, but also AI characters. So I hope to see you there.